Arahatifano, great to be with you for this Easter Sunday uh, service and to be able to spend this time uh, together. It's going to be a mix of fun and delight and uh, a few exciting things along the way. I'll show you this picture. It's a picture of one of our families and uh, after last Sunday's service, um, having their morning chips like they normally do in the cafe. And here's a second one. Some smart elk created a Zoom meeting of the Last Supper. Uh, so we're not going to do communion this time, but uh, that's the sort of world that we live in, and that's kind of a little bit of humour around the edges of it. So let's pray uh, as we begin. Lord, thank you that we are over halfway through this journey. Thank you that we can spend this time together with you. And thank you, Lord, that this is Easter Sunday, a Sunday of new life and new hope, a Sunday of promise, and of resurrection certainty. So we thank you for that and pray Lord that your spirit would be with us uh, today. We're going to have a couple of kids do a reading and that reading uh, uh, by the Wright family and by Evie Green uh, tells us the story of Easter Sunday and behind that you'll see a picture that Pete's painted for us this morning. It's painted using predominantly tea and coffee and a little bit of paint as well. So hear this and enjoy in the second half of this reading catching a glimpse of the angel that appears to the disciples. Jesus' friends were sad. They would never see their best friend again. How could this happen? Wasn't Jesus the rescuer? The king God had promised? It wasn't supposed to end like this. Yes, but whoever said anything about the end? Just before sunrise on the third day, there was an earthquake, and God sent an angel from heaven. When the guards saw the angel and fell down with fright, the angel rolled the huge stone away and sat on top of it and waited. At the first glimmer of dawn, Mary Magdalene and other women headed to the tomb to wash Jesus' body. The early morning slant, sun slanted through the ancient olive trees, drops of dew glittering on the leaves and grasses. Little tears everywhere. The friends walked quietly along the hilly path through the olive groves until they reached the tomb and immediately noticed something odd. It was wide open. They peered through the opening into the dark tomb. But wait, Jesus' body was gone! And something else, a shining man was there, clothes made from lightning. Don't be scared, the angel said, but they screamed anyway. The angel asked them, what are you doing here? This is a tomb, and tombs are for dead people. The woman couldn't speak. Jesus isn't dead anymore, he said. He's alive again. And their hearts leapt. And the angel laughed with such gladness that they felt for a moment as if they had woken from a nightmare. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on.
flashes of lightning rolls of thunder. Let's sing it on. Let's sing it on as strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The wise Great song, filled with wonder, awe struck wonder. I'm not sure if that's what you're feeling today. Probably most of us are actually feeling it shouldn't, it shouldn't be like this. It wasn't meant to be like this. If you were part of the crew who are going to go to Easter camp, it shouldn't be like this. If you were going to be on holiday, it shouldn't be like this. If you were going to have some sort of family event or family gathering for Easter, it wasn't meant to be like this. And that's exactly what those first followers of Jesus must have felt on that first Easter Sunday. For Mary, she's filled with grief. It wasn't meant to be like this. I've lost my Lord. For the disciples, they're frozen by fear. It wasn't meant to be like this as they hide behind locked doors. And for Thomas, he's overcome with doubt. He says, he won't believe in it as he sees himself, the risen Lord. It wasn't meant to be like this. Grief and fear and doubt predominated. And then it all changed. It all changed because they met Jesus. But before that, they were isolated in the upper room. They chose to self-isolate, probably in the same room that they had celebrated the Passover meal a few days before. But now they look out from that place of self-isolation and they begin to see something fundamentally has changed. Uh, this painting is an old Italian painting from 1601, an Italian painter called Caravaggio, and it depicts Thomas reaching his hands into the wound on the side of Jesus' um, chest. 
And when they meet the risen Lord, it all transforms. But Thomas, as he touches this wound, his doubt turns to worship. For Mary, as she recognizes the voice of Jesus, she's replaced her, her uh, grief with joy. And for the disciples who are overcome by fear and who lock themselves away as they meet the risen Lord, they're filled with new hope and courage. They've been trapped and now they are left transformed. And that's what Easter is all about. Good Friday we took that Japanese tea ceremony and talked about how the persecuted church used that to remember the communion. Uh, today I want to take a piece of paper, a square piece of paper, and uh, fold that piece of paper into paper cranes, another Japanese practice. We're going to see a couple little video clips, one about why and then one about how that we do that. But it's a way of taking a two-dimensional piece of paper and making it into a three-dimensional shape taking one situation and having it transformed, like Easter takes death and transforms it into life. And each crease of the piece of paper is like a wound, or like a scar, in our own lives. Like the scars in Jesus experienced at the cross. They shape our lives, and in the places of very clear transformation. They mark us and define us, but they also are the spaces where our life is shaped. The Jesus scars and wounds are exactly like that. They show continuity between the Lord who is crucified and the Lord who is risen. This is the same person. It's not a wiping of the past and then something new pops up, but the renewing of the past and the continuity of the scars from cross to risen Lord. They show something of God's glory. He keeps the scars, not from an inability to have them healed, but to wear them as markers of everlasting trophy, everlasting glory. A sign of dignity, not of deformity. A sign of love, not of loss. A sign of obedience, not of onerousness. Here is where the world here is what the world did to me. And at the same time, here is the statement of God's lavish love for each one of us. If they show continuity and they show glory, they also show our word and speak to our doubt. These wounds of Jesus, the risen Lord, say, this is what I did for you. So clearly and so starkly. So tenderly and so clearly saying, God is aware. God knows. God is part of the suffering and the pain of our world. And if you doubt it, look at these scars that show both pain, woundedness, and healing new life. As you take the paper and you make paper cranes in the next wee while, you crease it. Every crease is like a scar. A scar that shapes the future. And the paper is like our life. Every one of us is given a life. And how we use that uh, can be to create something useful and something good, or for no avail. There's a sense of hope in these paper cranes. And their colour and their shape, they speak of new life, of death transforming into life. And they say that every one of us can do our bit in making one or two. And maybe at Pentecost we can bring all these paper cranes back and have a celebration of all that we've made and the new life that we've been part of. Through this time I've been reading through Isaiah 30, and particularly Isaiah 30 and verse 15. It's a chapter about where the people of God were under threat from the Assyrians. And in that sense of threat they ran to Egypt, they loaded up their donkeys with money, and they ran to Egypt to be their saviour, to be their support, to be their protection. And God looks at that and he says, you're looking in the wrong place. And so many of us can be looking in the wrong place at this stage. And maybe it's our checkbook, or maybe it's our credit card, or it's our business, or it's our government handout. 
maybe it's economists or government leadership. But what Isaiah 30 tells us is that we need to look to God. It says, in returning and resting, you will be saved. In returning to God and resting in God, you will be saved. In quietness and trust, you will find your strength. None of us is coming out of this the way we went into it. Some people have talked about before Corona and after Corona, BC and AC. This will define our lives. This marathon that the Prime Minister is talking about will reshape us. Some businesses will not come out of this. Some ministries will not come out of this. Some churches will not come out of this. Many will be reshaped and reformed because of this. In quietness and trust, you will find your strength. This is a time to be quiet with the risen Lord. This is a time to trust, like Mary the disciples and Thomas, in the transforming power of this risen Lord. For in quietness and trust, we will find our strength. We're not going to look to Egypt, to governments or to colonists. We're going to choose to look to God. Not great strategies, but the quiet voice of God in our hearts and minds, in our lives that will lead us into new shapes of what we are to be are going forward. Watch this excerpt of the making of the paper crane. And then watch as Taki and JJ show us how to make our own. We're going to suggest that we make these. We make them as a prayer. We make them as a prayer about how God is shaping our lives and transforming us. We make them as a prayer for the needs and pains of the world. Have a look at these two clips. Just a piece of paper in front of me. My fingers itch, my eyes dance, slowly, point to point, line to line, folding, unfolding, opening, closing, sliding, turning, increasing. Each decision made with tips of my fingers, pleasing to my eyes, encouraging to my heart. Two dimension to three dimension, death to life, vision realized. We have a tradition in Japan when somebody is sick, we make 1,000 cranes to wish him or her well. So as a human being, most of us wants to be valuable, useful, and we want to contribute to a better society.
do with these paper cranes? Well, as I said earlier, we want to encourage you to make a couple of paper cranes this uh, this weekend uh, and to bring them back, maybe at Pentecost or whenever it is we're able to gather together and we'll let them float. Uh, we'll make some art out of them, some creativity out of them and be a reminder of the new life and the goodness that God gives. But today is the day for carefully and prayerfully crafting them and setting them aside as symbols of hope and readiness for the celebration that is yet to come.
with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Normally, a large amount of our young people would be at Easter camp at this time, but they're not actually completely missing out because this year Easter camp's happening online in the form of watch parties on Facebook and on Instagram. And although this is going to be a vastly different experience, the online nature means that the Easter story may be able to be more accessible and able to reach more young people, as factors such as money or distance are no longer a barrier for being able to join and participate. So let's pray that this Easter our young people will hear, experience, and respond to God. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you're a constant in an ever-changing world. We lift up our young people to you as they face these changes, disappointments, grief, uncertainty, and unknowns. May they know your peace in the midst of their fears and their worries. May those in need be able to reach out for help and find the support that they need quickly. We pray that our young people will have open hearts and open minds and that they will know your deep and lasting love for them. May they find you in the beauty of nature, in the quiet and in the still, in the truth of your word and in the kindness of a stranger. May they grow a heart that desires you, a heart that is filled with grace and with wisdom, and that they will look to you every day as they live in hope for the future. Earlier I spoke with Josh. Uh, Josh is one of our team over in Asia and he's leading a group right at the moment of about 28 adults plus children uh, from all over the world and uh, looking after a large chunk of local people there as well and this is a very pressured time so I want to chat with him and then after that we're going to pray together around the offering in our world. G'day Josh, how are you doing? Uh, we're doing very well, thank you. It is lovely to be chatting with you guys today. And good to be uh, kind of hearing you live as well. Still, seems like the world's going crazy and it's good to hear your voice. Hey, how's the family? It really has. Yeah, family's doing well, thanks. Um, as you mentioned, the world is going a bit crazy at the moment, so we're um, currently sitting in a lockdown, but um, yeah, no, we're, we're doing very well despite everything going on around us. And I guess you're in touch with the rest of the team. Do you know how they're doing? Yeah, no, everyone here is doing really, really well. Um, yeah, we're kind of just settling down into the lockdown life. Um, the kids here have recently started school or will be starting school over the internet, which is yeah, kind of strange to think that that would have happened a few weeks ago. Um, so everyone is really just trying to make the most of this time and do those jobs that um, yeah, kind of just been uh, on a bit of a back burner for the last little while. Um, and just like the world around us, I suppose, at the moment, we're, we're just bunkered down and we're no doubt a little bit bored, a little bit frustrated, a little bit anxious, but we always remember that we have a good God. We've got each other, we've got board games, internet streaming, a bit of work, and um, with the heat going on here in where we live, we've got $20 paddling pools that are kind of cooling us down during the heat of the day. <laughs> Sounds like fun, mate. Hey, what about the streets? What's it like you know, out, out on the streets and you know, the general feel of the city? strange if I'm honest. We live in quite a major city um, and the streets have gone very, very, very quiet. So um, most people are following the lockdown rules. Um, so it means, yeah, everything is really, really quiet and people are only venturing out for essential supplies. Um, yeah, so it's it's very, very, very strange. But the markets are um, keeping up with supplies. So Good. everyone out and about is keeping, keeping calm and coping well. Um, and uh, kind of one of the upsides, because everything is shut at the moment, but the pollution levels here have just totally dropped. So the, for the first time in a long time, we have actually blue skies, which is really, really nice. And at night time, we can actually even see stars up, up in the sky. So that's kind of one little upside to what's going on here. It's actually amazing worldwide how quickly um, some rivers and, you know, air pollutions are kind of recovering. Amazing. Hey, um, we, we're, we're doing Easter weekend, you're doing Easter weekend. How can we be praying for you, the family, the team? What, what was the best things for us to be praying about? Oh, I think there's, I mean, there's a lot of things going on worldwide. 
as you guys know at the moment, uh, but for us here specifically, I think for our team, uh, we, of course, just like you guys, are feeling like these are very, very strange times. We're feeling sometimes a little bit powerless behind our locked doors. We can't go out into the um, communities that we want to be part of. So kind of praying for how we can continue to love and support our people from, um, from afar, a few blocks away, I suppose. And at the same time, as um, we hope the doors will open soon, um, how can we continue to love our and serve our people in light of the COVID-19 and the response there? Mm-hmm. Um, and on top of that, at the same time, our community is kind of one of them is sitting up, kind of... You were losing it there, Josh. Well, we'll end up... Right. And I think Oh, sorry. That's right. Keep going, mate. We just lost a few seconds. You carry on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the community that um, we community that we um, kind of look after here, we've just got word that the police are actually uh, blocking the exits and entrance there at the moment, so they can't yeah. get in and out. Um, the good news is, though, that food is coming to them, um, so veggie supplies and um, various bits and bobs are coming to them, but they can't leave. So they're feeling a little bit trapped, and, um, yeah, so just, a, I suppose, a bit of prayer for comfort and peace as they kind of wait out the remainder of um, the lockdown yeah. Behind, yeah, behind the guards, they don't let them out onto the road. Yeah, okay. Hey, thanks, Josh. Um, please give our love and support to all the crew. We'll be praying for those things and take care this weekend. I hear you guys are doing a kind of quiz with people right across the team in all the different houses. So, yeah, I hope your house wins. Yeah, thanks, AJ. I'm sure we will. Sounds good. Okay, mate. Take care. Hey. Thanks, team. Happy Easter, everyone. And to you too. Yeah. So that was uh, talking with Josh. We're going to uh, sing in a moment, um, praise the name. Uh, but before we do that, I want to show us a clip from World Vision. Uh, at Christmas, we gave money for a Christmas appeal to the Rohingya people, the Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh. And this is Grant Bowden. Uh, he was one of the young guys at Island Baptist when we were there way back in donkey's days ago and uh, now CEO of World Vision and great to hear him just saying a little thank you to us at Southwest for what we gave and we're giving again we're giving again to support our church and our communities and our ministries here in Christchurch but we're giving again to support our people overseas and one of those is Josh so um, I'm going to pray and then you'll see this little clip of thank you and then we're going to see a clip that shows us uh, the bigness of God and what we truly believe this Easter as we sing praise the name. Let's pray together. Lord, we do lift up uh, Josh and the team and all the people who have gone from our church to be ambassadors for you in the world. We pray for them. We ask, Lord God, that you'll be with them this Easter. They'd know your presence. They'd know your protection. And they'd know your leading. We pray for the communities that Josh talks about who are surrounded by armed police and their area is locked down, shut down and uh, great fear there of this virus spreading so quickly through those cramped conditions and no real support coming. So Lord please be with each one of them. Many of us know them by name and have visited their homes. Please bless them and care for them and protect them. We pray for all that this crew are doing in this city. We pray for all that others are doing in the other cities of the world where they work. And we ask, Lord God, that you would bring healing to your world. And as we give, Lord, thank you for all that you have given us. Thank you for where we live and what we have. May we be generous people who put our trust in you and look to you. Uh, for you are our God and you're the one that we can genuinely trust in for all of eternity. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, AJ uh, and everyone at Southwest Baptist. Um, I'm Grant Bailden, National Director at World Vision, uh, and I want to say thank you to you, especially 
um, for the collection you raised uh, to fund this work. I'm outside one of uh, the community kitchens that your funding has helped um, to make possible. And we've met with the women here who've told us the stories, not only of the hardships and sorrows of what they've fled, um, and the difficulty of life here in the camps, but also um, that just what's happening as, as they come together, thousands of women coming together to use these community kitchens, um, to share their lives, to learn, um, to talk about uh, the issues that they face in their own lives. Um, this is truly transformational and it's possible because of the support that you've given. So thank you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified died and was buried and descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
you with us. I hope something of the risen Lord's love and power is speaking to you. Let me wrap this up by saying um, Jesse, who was baptised on the 15th of March, is going to do our benediction. He was obviously with us on the 15th of March, that last Sunday we were all together, and he's since flown to Japan, and he's going to read the benediction for us from Japan. Uh, it seems appropriate as we look to the persecuted Japanese church uh, this weekend. And then there's going to be an item that you can enjoy and families if you've got some stuff ready for the kids to enjoy. Well, after that item will be the time to do that. So enjoy Jesse's uh, prayer and this final item. And have a great Easter Sunday. Hey guys, I'm Jesse. I'm here with Declan. Um, in Japan currently. Um, let's just close our service with the prayer. Um, kia to, kia tato katoa, te atawhai o tō tato ariki, a i kuraiti, me te aroha o te atua, me te whiwhinga te itanga, ki te warua tapu, ake, 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 amene. Cheers guys! Gonna celebrate your party with you.
Come on now. Let's all celebrate and have a good time. It's up to you, what's your pleasure?